Hey guys, it's Dan Specs here. I'm here with another how to draw, but this time I'm actually going to be redoing my Sonic how to draw tutorial, as that was the most requested in the poll I did a, a, a little while back ago. If you all would like to vote for the next character that I'm going to be doing, then make sure to keep an eye out for those. And yeah, so let's get into it with uh, how to draw Sonic. And the reason why I'm redoing this is because I wanted to give a little bit of a different format to where I go more in depth of how to specifically draw the character instead of just talking over a, a drawing I just randomly did. So I feel like this will give you a, a much better understanding of the more in-depth intricacies of the character design and all that. So. Uh, first everything that you want to do whenever drawing a character is you want to pull up a bunch of references. So here we go, I have some reference uh, photos of Sonic. You can see here I have a lot of just kind of what inspires me, um, just uh, whatever you are inspired by. Uh, it's always good to see uh, see references. I get inspired a lot from uh, Yuji Okawa's art. He's most known for like the adventure art and then you know that kind of uh, graffiti look to the character. And then here I have some uh, some of my favorite classic designs of Sonic. And then uh, I have Tyson uh, Tyson's work right here. I, I have this just so it's a good turnaround. Uh, it's always good to have whatever you're trying to draw in multiple angles so you could kind of see like how it's aligned and how they would look in a certain way or a certain angle so it's always good just to have references even though I've been drawing this character for a long time uh, and I basically have it packed down to memory it's always still good to have a reference to the show so here let's get into it um, I think I am going to be drawing Sonic more of uh, his modern counterpart, but I will be getting giving some pointers on how to draw him in his classic look. That's why I have these down here. So, uh, but first thing you want to do when drawing Sonic is, you know, the first thing they all have in common for the head is his head is just a basic circle. You can see here that all his, every one of his heads is just a circle. And you want to do this with uh, any character that you're trying to draw, break them down into simple shapes, you know, see how like every single one of his heads is a circle. That goes for classic too. Um, you just want to, again, break the character down into basic shapes. And for a lot of these characters, their head is just a simple circle. Uh, so. Yeah, let's focus on probably this one. This is just a good standing uh, pose for Sonic. So you can see here his head again. Uh, it's always hard to draw circles. You can see his head. It's just a circle. And then you can see... Right, here, let me line it up a little better. So he's made up of mostly circles and triangles. So you can see here that his head you put some guidelines down in the middle for where the middle of his face is gonna be. That's a good point of where you can mark like where his nose is gonna be, which way he's facing, and all that. Okay, and then you see his ears. His ears always rest on top of the circle. That goes for every single design, even classic. So you can see here, yeah, I'll do this one. You can see his circle you know and you can kind of see with the shading right here you see how it kind of starts right here you can see that's like kind of the base outline for his head and then yeah same thing here you could see his ears just rest on top of that circle they're not they're not down here they're not way over here they're always gonna rest on that circle and then kind of same thing for this one. This one you can kind of cheat though with his top spike, but I'll get more into that in a bit. But yeah, so same thing with his modern design. His ears um, for his modern design are much more long. They're more, they're, they're a bit more long than his classic counterpart. His classic design has more kind of an equilateral triangle going on where it's the same uh, 
same length between all three, probably besides the bottom, but that's just because it curves into his head. His modern design, his ears are super stretched out. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. Basically with the differences between his modern and classic counterpart is that they made a lot of things more lanky with his modern design. His classic counterpart has a lot more short and stoutness going on with it. So then again, a circle with the head and then two triangles for the ears and then his spikes are the same thing. All triangles but they're, they're a lot more curved. And you could see his top spike ends at a shorter point than both of his bottom spikes. So you could see how this one is a lot shorter compared to these two. So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind is that his top spike is always the shortest one. And then I like to imagine them, his spikes are really kind of like shark fins almost especially his top one and then you just kind of got to workshop it i have some difficulties with his uh with his spikes but they're always um you always just got to workshop it and then with his spikes just depending on what you're going for uh modern sonic like the sonic we have right now at this exact moment his spikes are a little short than what they were in like say adventure so, you know, this is him from, I believe, Adventure 2. Uh, his spikes are just super elongated, super droopy. Uh, they curve a lot more. They go, they point a lot more down. Um, so you could see here how his spikes are a lot more elongated than what we have right now. See how they're a little more erect here. Meanwhile, his Adventure 1 and Adventure 2 spikes are just uh, they're a lot droopy you'll see this with a lot of the adventure art it's a lot flowy it's a lot of curves a lot of like you know no sharp edges even with his leg you could see it, it just like it all flows into each other with the modern kind of art that we get now from yuji uakawa a lot of the stuff is has a lot of points it's a lot more rigid and a lot more stiff. So it, it's just, uh, here, let me see if I can find, yeah, see like this one, this is kind of what is drawn. See how his arms kind of have more of a point to them. Uh, same thing with his legs going on here. You could definitely tell where his knees and elbows are at while as, you know, when he first used to draw him, is he has super newly arms, they're super curved not uh, really like flowing. Even when they're bent like uh, super far, they, they don't end at, they're more so like this rather than that, you know, or here, let me draw that a little better. See how like you could definitely see a point. Yeah, it's just one thing to keep in mind with uh, Yuji Okawa's art. Um, it's just whatever you prefer. I think I prefer Sonic with more uh, noodle kind of like limbs it just kind of makes him more flowy uh i feel like it's definitely more in line with this character to be kind of that relaxed but uh again it's whatever you want to do and then moving down onto his body you can see his body is more of a kind of an oval shape so <clears throat> so you can see here um, and you could also mess around a lot with it. So with art pieces such as, uh, let me see, uh, did I? So like with this one, you could see his body goes over his face. And a lot of Sonic, uh, Sonic art uh, will do that where they put his body in front of his face just to kind of like give that cool perspective shot. Um, but a lot of the times when he's just standing kind of neutral, you can see how his body is uh, behind his face. So again, it's kind of that just perspective of how usually if his head is kind of face, let me see. Usually if his head is kind of, you know, 
face like this where he's kind of looking down it's usually a good indicator to put his body behind his head meanwhile if you have like say him looking more up like this see how the line in the middle of his face is more curved uh, it's that's kind of a kind of cheating way of how you could put his body uh, above uh, his head it just depends on what the kind of pose you want to go for. Usually the more dynamic poses, they put his body uh, in front of his head. Uh, kind of with the standard pose, you could just kind of put it wherever. You With this, you could also put his body in front of his head if you want to make him, you know, have his chest a little more pronounced, you know, have him a lot more, like, kind of confident. Um, so that's whatever you want to do. Sonic is a very kind of loose character that you can just kind of tweak and kind of make your own, which is one of the reasons why I like drawing him and why I got into the franchise in the first place. Uh, however, with his classic co counterpart, you could see how his body is a circle, you know? Whereas modern Sonic's is more kind of like a bean oval type shape. Classic Sonic is just a circle. Uh, it's kind of more reminiscent of how the old cartoons were drawn back then, like Mickey Mouse, Felix the Cat. Um, so yeah, he has a little bit more of a belly to him, but one thing you want to keep in mind with both modern and classic is that his stomach, or his torso area, always just barely clips into his head. So you can see how they overlap. They don't sit, you know, they don't sit on top of each other, uh, and it doesn't go way too far off. It just barely kind of clips it. And that goes for modern and classic for when you're drawing their body. It always just kind of clips over him. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with the spikes uh, for a classic Sonic is, again, kind of like how we have here, his spikes are a lot shorter. So, yeah, you can see his spikes are a lot more short, a lot more stout, and that's one thing you'll notice, again, with the classic interpretation of the characters, is that their spikes, or just everything in general, is a lot more short, a lot more stout. Um, you could also draw his spikes in many different ways. I like the way Tyson Hess draws his spikes. He draws them with a bit more kind of girth, I guess. Whereas you'll have, like, say, uh, Nao Toshima's art, he'll kind of draw the spikes, you know, with a bit more curve to them. You know, they'll have that kind of arc going on. Whereas Tyson Hess's uh, spikes, he'll draw them a bit more erect, kind of more reminiscent of, like, the uh, Sonic CD, the Junio Sonic design and then yeah see like how this one it curves a lot more Tyson Hess is like basically they're almost like uh, sharp triangles at the end and that's how he draws them right here they're more again kind of like with his ears the more equilateral tri triangles and then he always draws the the last the third spike kind of skinnier than the others Moving on to his limbs, you could see, of course, with Modern Sonic, how they're more stretched out than Classic, but also another thing to keep in mind is that Modern Sonic, his limbs always become thicker at the hands and the shoes. So they're kind of skinnier uh, when, they, when they're connected to his body, and then they just kind of even now. So you could see how his ankles are a lot thicker than his uh, when they're connected to his torso. This is just so it looks more natural when it curves into those big old hands and feet, you know? Uh, with Classic Sonic, they're not really like that. They're just more kind of straight uh, tubes down his body. Uh, they don't really uh, get thicker at the ankles. Yeah, well, you can see with all these uh, classic Sonic, his limbs are just more so like tube, straight tubes. With his shoes, they're a lot. This is one thing <laughs> about his shoes. 
Um, of course, uh, if you're just learning how to draw him, you could draw them like triangles. It's a good way to kind of get that shape in. And they're just basic kind of triangles at the end of the day. You know, you could draw them farther apart. Uh, same thing with classic. You could see here how at the beginning they just, you know, they were short or not short. They were kind of uh, elongated kind of triangles. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the same with classic, uh, except of course I should have brought the uh, Junior Sonic design, but that will lead me into you know how Uakawa used to draw him, and th this is what fans dub the hot dog shoes. Yeah, you can see this is a prime example of you know the hot dog shoes at work. They're just they're not really so much of like triangles if they were here let me see I should probably draw them in black red doesn't go so yeah you can see if like I were to draw them just like the regular triangles they would be kind of closer to that but yeah the hot dog shoes just they always they're always curving up which I really like um, yeah but another way you could draw shoes which I also really like I honestly maybe prefer these to the hot dog shoes is um, kind of a it's kind of a mix in between. Uh, this is how Tyson has drew them for the uh, Team Sonic Racing Overdrive uh, animations. Is that yes, they're kind of the same. Whereas you kind of get that uh, triangle shape, but also it's not just it doesn't end at a point at the tip. He kind of gives it this little rounded edge to them. Uh, kind of reminiscent of the hot dog shoes, you know, the kind of how they're rounded more at the tip than over here, where they just end at a point. Yeah, right here, he kind of gives it, yes, it's like a triangle, but then he just kind of gives that little bump at the end where the straps kind of, at, uh, from the end of the straps to the toe, he just gives it that little point, or not point, the little bump. And then, yeah, they kind of curve along. And then I like this with the perspective is that since his foot is more so going towards you rather than over here where it's just bending way off to the side, you know, where it's kind of almost he has his feet like <laughs> kind of, you know, facing opposite ways of each other. Uh, that's just how they used to always draw, you know, with the classic. And it, that, that looks good, too. But... Again, I just kind of like that perspective where the, the shoe is facing towards you. And then it just kind of gives it that nice effect where you see here the heels are always going to touch each other. But this shoe is always going to come down a little more. So that way it, it just has that depth where it's not sticking all the way over here. But it's just kind of facing towards you. Which it, it just looks more natural, which I really like. And then his hands. Hands are always gonna be tricky when, uh, just with anything, human hands, cartoon hands. They're such simple yet complex uh, things because you gotta worry about, you know, where the folds of the hand go. Thankfully, with Sonic, since he is such a cartoony character, you can draw his hands so simple. Uh, basically, things uh, you want to keep in mind is that you know they're just basic circles and then you could just draw the individual fingers on that so you could just do that 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 and then the thumb and then just kind of work around it you know uh, the more uh, modern he gets the more complex and kind of more realistic his hands seem to be. You could see here how he's got, you know, all the folds and how it would be, uh, you know, with kind of a more realistic human hand. You could see here with his early adventure artwork, they're still kind of cartoony where they have, you know, the basic shapes, you know, he's got the circle going on and then just kind of the simplistic round fingers like you would see in all those old... Uh, rubber hose cartoons but then yeah as the as his style progresses you could see he gets a little more detailed with the hands you know with the gloves they have a lot more wrinkles going on 
Uh, with these, if you want to draw them a little more realistic, they're more kind of square rather than circles. So you kind of just got to give it that like square shape. And then of course you can draw the thumb usually is, you know, the palm of the hand is like half of it. And then depending on how you want to draw the fingers, they're just a lot more elongated. A lot, uh, they taper a lot more at the ends uh, rather than just being kind of like cartoony. So like this is how it would be for like if you're drawing them a lot more kind of like classic, I guess. And then just kind of like simple, uh, you know, simple round shapes for the fingers. But with this kind of new modern art style, it is a lot more realistic of how the hands are. You always want to have three or two joints, uh, three if you count the knuckle of the finger. So right here you have one. Right here, let me put it back to red. You have one, two, and then three for each finger. Uh, yeah, hands are a little tricky. Just the best way. I could say is like if you want to get better with hands just keep drawing them uh, eventually you'll get better trust me I still have a lot of difficulty with hands uh, usually when it's with fists you could kind of get away with it more you could just you know draw a basic circle then just kind of have it to where his uh, his index finger just kind of curves up and it just like kind of molds into that circle and then just maybe have his thumb poked out yeah, a lot of Tyson Hess's art is a lot of angles. He has, you know, angle on his chest, angle with his mouth. Uh, his art style is just very kind of angular, which I really like. Uh, I think it's a really cool style. Uh, again, it's just kind of whatever you want to go for. If you like Sonic, you know, with more curves, you can see here with Uwakawa's art, it's a lot curvy, a lot more rounded off, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, if you want to draw Sonic with more angular eyes, you can do that too, you can see here how it's a lot more, and this is just like stuff, uh, to study, and just to have fun with, you know, just, uh, kind of do whatever you feel best at. Now, I'm gonna take all these kind of, like, tips and, like, references that I've done and kind of make my own version of Sonic. So again, first thing that we talked about is a circle. One thing I like to do is just grab the circle tool and just, oop, <laughs> just makes it, you get a perfect circle every time and it, it just makes it uh, easier. And then uh, I'm just gonna draw him kind of in a standard pose, kind of like this, just to kind of show off what we've done here. You know what, I should probably put that on a different layer. So, yeah, there. And then, of course, uh, what we start off with in the face is the two guidelines. So you wanna draw them in the middle of one facing kind of up, and then another one facing uh, to the side. You can see here, I'm probably gonna try to like mimic this one as best as I can. Put it right there, and then Again, his ears are always gonna rest on top of his head. So he's gonna kind of look like a cat before you add in, you add on like the spikes and all that. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, again, you could kind of mess with it. Uh, oh, one thing about the ears is that, I forgot to mention this, is that with Uwakawa's art, the ear that always faces away or is farthest from the camera is always a solid blue. You don't really get any of that kind of inner ear uh, with the with this one. Uh, but with Tyson Hess and how I like to draw him is that he still shows that inner ear. It just gives it that bit more of like perspective and it just makes it look a lot kind of cleaner, I guess, or more realistic, I guess. Um, I, I just really like how he uh, draws that, so that's how I kind of 
like to draw it. Just you want to draw it a bit more skinny. So like this one kind of would be like that, and then this one just kind of follows the same exact shape as this ear. Again, with the spikes, you want to draw this top spike, the shortest. You want to have that nice curve going on, and then it usually ends uh, just a good distance away from his ear. You don't want to draw it going into his ear like that, or like stopping all the way over here. It's just kind of that middle ground. And then same thing with his other spikes. Again, this one's always going to be the shortest. These ones go a lot further. And then get his bottom spike. You just want to draw it kind of in that nice curve motion. Again, um, with a lot of them, you could kind of cheat the bottom spike with this one. You could see how it kind of, like if you draw them shorter, you can get it where it meets with his neck. Uh, if you like to draw them how I like to draw them, you know, where they're a bit thicker, uh, a bit more droopy, you could kind of get away with it not completely meeting with his head. You can see like right here how his bottom spike is just completely like, it, it, it goes all the way like right here. But, um, so you don't have to like draw it always like right here. You could kind of get away with it. Yeah, again, you could workshop it. Uh, yeah, see, like that looks pretty good. Uh, again, you could workshop it, like I may move this spike. Again, that's one of the benefits of drawing digitally. You could always move stuff instead of just having to erase and redraw it, which I really like. There we go. And then his body, again, since I kind of have him kind of facing up, I'm gonna draw his body uh, above his head. And then again, his body is just kind of uh, an oval shape. Uh, you wanna make sure he has his chest, you know, he, he's always confident, always likes to have his chest kind of puffed out. It just ends off at a skinnier point. Again, if you're drawing uh, classic, you'd want to draw it uh, more circular. Uh, it's just a perfect circle if you're drawing classic. But um, I, I just like modern Sonics, I guess, uh, look better. What you can do for his arms is I like to draw where his hands are going to be. And then just draw his arms kind of... Uh, connecting connecting to his body it's just a good way obviously um you don't want to draw your hands like super far or like uh you just want to keep it at a good range of what's reasonable i'm gonna have it where he's kind of waving and then you know and then it just connects to his body draw basic cylinders for his cuffs uh, you can see here uh, with kind of the classic design, you could either draw them one of two ways, uh, more kind of donut-ish shapes where it looks like he has two donuts stacked onto each other, or kind of how I like to do it with Tyson Hess is it's a lot more cylinder, a lot more square, but it just kind of tapers in the middle, or it goes in, and it just kind of gives it that look, nice little fold. Um, draw his other hand. I'm just gonna have it like on his waist. There we go. Here, probably just move this where it's like that more. And then his legs. <clears throat> if you're just drawing kind of a simple standing pose, I like to draw his legs very straight kind of at an angle. You don't really want to draw them going like this. This is one thing I always see with uh, some Sonic art is that they always draw his legs. You could see whenever he's standing with his chest, basically the leg that's farthest away from the camera kind of curves and it blends into his body. So you could see here, 
uh, his left leg, uh, it just kind of blends into his body as it goes straight down with his uh, other leg just kind of following a little behind, uh, just a, a bit more curved than this one. They're not always going to be parallel with each other. One is always going to be kind of straight, kind of, uh, again, it morphs into the body. Uh, that's ter <laughs> That's a terrible body, but yeah, you can see here, one will always kind of curve and just morph into that body, and then the other one just kind of like uh, goes into that, but you never want to draw them. Or I guess I could just, <laughs> I have a whole body right here. Yeah, you never want to just like draw them going there uh, where he's like bow-legged or something like that, unless you're going for a specific pose, but like, uh, usually, Sonic's a pretty confident character. You want to kind of get that, you know. He's confident in the way he stands. He's confident in the way he does a lot of his actions. So you always want to draw him kind of in that, you know. Yeah, see how, like, this leg, again, it perfectly flows into his body with the other one just kind of, like, right like that, you know. And then... With his shoes again, how I like this one. I either prefer like the hot dog or these kind, kind kinds of shoes. But if you're just kind of starting off, you could draw them with basic uh, triangles. Basically, you want to keep in mind in that the back of his shoe is kind of a little bit close to how his feet are, and then yeah, you just draw. Um, his feet again if you want to get that perspective if you want to just draw them like that that's fine too um, but again I like to draw them where it's like he has that depth yeah kind of like that and then same thing uh, with his foot that's facing the camera you want to just draw everything a little bit more um, a little bit lowered than his other foot just so again you get that kind of nice perspective and then again uh, I like to draw it where his foot is kind of facing the camera Uh, oh, and then, forgot to mention this earlier, but his back spikes and tail are pretty simple. You just, uh, again, want to follow that curve of the body. Just extend it a little more where you get his uh, back spikes. Depending on the angle, you could fit in two, but it's usually just uh, one. So, yeah, again, you got the curve. You just extend it a little more and then just connect it to his back and then his tail. Since I have his uh, hand kind of covering his tail here, uh, I probably won't draw it, but you could just draw like a simple triangle for his tail, but it's gonna be hidden for me, so. But yeah, that's the basic kind of anat- oh, my bad. Forgot his little, little tummy fur. Uh, basically for that, you just wanna kind of make it a smaller oval shape uh, of his body. kind of like an inner body within his body <laughs> but yeah uh, that's the basic kind of anatomy that you want to get with Sonic uh, again for his classic counterpart um, it's just you know a lot more stout so as opposed to this you probably just draw a circle not the best circle but a circle nonetheless and then kind of same thing except for his legs uh, it doesn't really like you won't be drawing his leg right here uh, He does have a bit more of a gut, so uh, They will be drawn like that like you could see here how it doesn't fully uh, Mesh into his body it just kind of like sticks out like that with classic Sonic uh, Unlike modern Sonic you could draw his legs uh, more parallel to each other His body just kind of gives him that leeway where it's not really so much like, uh, what's the word? It, it just kind of like, it's just kind of like a bunch of popsicles kind of sticking out. And then of course, draw his shoes. Uh, you could draw, you know, 
Classic Sonic has more triangle issues. I'm just drawing this kind of really fast again. A uh, bit of an inner circle within his body. And then same thing with his spikes. You just want to extend that out. And then with the tail. And, you know, he got his hands right there. Like that. Basically, you have your uh, basic anatomy with Sonic right here. And so now I'm going to be going into kind of the more... Uh, more specific details about it. Um, so here, let me get into a new layer. Do black. So with his face, you can see here, you know, you got your guidelines. And then you just kind of do the muzzle where it's a little bump that just goes right over that middle guideline. But then his cheeks meet within that guideline and then just depending on how much you take up is how much his muzzle is going to take up from his face so if you have him kind of looking up it's going to take a lot of surface area whereas if you have him kind of more looking down his muzzle isn't going to take a lot of that surface area you know it's just going to be kind of very flat but since i have here him looking up it's going to take out take up a lot of that kind of space and yeah, you just want to, again, follow your sketch, kind of have that basic muzzle. There you go. And then his nose, of course, since we have it right in the middle, you just kind of plop it on in there. It just always, it's always sticking out off to the side. You never really kind of want to draw it where it's facing because that just looks weird. It's always sticking out. There we go. Yeah, something like that. And then his eyes. His eyes are a little tricky. Uh, how I like to do it is I like to draw his eyes kind of curved into his muzzle uh, like that. See how it like kind of curves into his muzzle. How they've been drawing him and how the design we have right now uh, is they, you know, they draw his muzzle. This is just kind of a quick sketch. And then they just have his eyes just go out. And uh, I, I just do not care for that. It just looks weird. It doesn't look as natural. I like it to where it, like, you know, it flows. It, his eyes flow into each other. And then just kind of draw that. So we'll do the same thing here. Uh, his eyebrow ridge is gonna be right in the middle. We're just gonna draw him. And the uh, cool thing with his eyes, uh, more specifically with his eyebrows, is that you can really get a lot of like leeway on how you wanna draw it. So if you wanna draw it kind of standard like that, you can. If you wanna draw him kind of like, you know, given that, eyebrow kind of like he's lowering one eyebrow or that he's really mad he can you know with one kind of facing up here uh kind of a cool trick that you could do if you're not really sure how to place his eyes is just kind of draw two ovals so like if you want one of his eyes kind of sticking straight up you could draw that and then kind of the other one if you want to draw it kind of again kind of that like smirk or not smirk the kind of like raising it you just do that and then you just kind of like connect the two since he has a big old cyclops eye and yeah you could get kind of like a result like that since he doesn't have two separate eyes but here i think i'm just going to draw him with kind of a just kind of a standard expression Since he's, I'm just having him kind of look at the camera. Uh, his right eye right here is going to be hidden behind his nose. And then with for his mouth, uh, it's just simple. If you want to draw like a simple smirk, you could just draw a little 
curve right there. It kind of is close to his eyes, and then you can just draw another one like that. Uh, I personally like to draw him with the kind of swoosh uh, moon mouth, as I like to call it, from the adventure art. I just feel like it gives him a lot more character and personality. Yeah, something like that. And then his eyebrows, you want to just have it where it fully kind of uh, follows his eyes. You just want to have his eyebrows kind of mold and shape into his eyes. And then same thing over here, but this one, depending on how he's facing it, facing the camera, you want to just like have it fully. If he was probably facing more towards his uh, right, right here, you could probably just put his eyebrow kind of going like that. But since he is kind of looking more towards the camera, uh, I kind of like to give him a little bit more like face right here. Yeah, that's the intricacies of his face. And then, of course, you just want to follow your your sketch, you know, your structure. Just kind of clean it up, I guess. His hand. So his hand... You can just, again, since it's I have it more curled up into a ball, you can just kind of do something like that where it's his index finger and then his other fingers kind of like follow. Follow within that kind of circle. And then just draw that cuff. And then, of course, with his arms, you want it thicker uh, when it's at his wrist, and just have it get skinnier when it attaches to his body. Again, with his legs, you just kind of have it to where it blends into his body like that and again just have it to where it gets thicker at the bottom and then since his feet are kind of like uh, drawn in a different angle uh, you could have it to where his cuffs go behind his feet kind of like that Oh yeah, and then if his buckles are always on the outside of his shoe, so you could draw a little buckle like that right there. And uh, there you go. So yeah, that's kind of like the basic fundamentals of drawing Sonic. Oh, whoops, I forgot to connect that. Bam, like that. Yeah, that's kind of the basic fundamentals of how to draw Sonic. Uh, <laughs> this is just kind of like a quick sketch, but uh, again, uh, if you have time, you could further refine it, uh, do what you want with it. Uh, make it a little more um, you know flow better but yeah these are just the basic kind of fundamentals and understandings of Sonic as a character and then once you kind of get this down you know kind of the basic poses uh, the basic anatomy and all that you can start doing more dynamic poses like this one uh, this one I did on stream uh, it was a lot of fun uh, just you know talking with you guys uh, so next time for the next how to draw I'm, I'll be hosting another stream on you know the next character and just kind of like drawing them out but yeah same thing 
Uh, but yeah, so next time if you want to catch that stream, I'll be sure to announce it and it will be right here on YouTube. You can see here, it's a little different than how I drew it on stream. Uh, I kind of like fixed the body a bit, um, the way I drew it on the stream. It was just a little more static. Uh, I, I'll post a picture right here on how it was. And th this just, uh, I did it this way just so it kind of gives it that little more of a dynamic pose. It uh, Just to give it that little oomph, you know. Um, rather than just it being kind of like a straight side profile. I feel like this is a much better pose in the end. And then once you get your sketch just right, you could move on to the line work and the coloring, shading, and highlights and all that. And then you could get something like this. Boom. Yeah, this is the finished product. And I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I really like the pose. I, I really like the coloring and all that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my tutorial on how to draw Sonic. I hope you guys find this very useful for whenever you guys draw him. Again, Sonic's a character that uh, I just always love his design. And uh, it's, I, I just always love drawing him. He's the one that got me into drawing and, you know... Uh, me drawing in turn further got into the franchise with learning how to draw the other characters so yeah again I'll be posting kind of a poll on YouTube uh, just to see who you all would like to see in the next how to draw so look forward to that and then again look forward to the coinciding stream that will be happening with that character that I'll be drawing uh, in that time it'll be sometime in the future oh and then uh like i said last time on the last how to draw uh, a lot of you guys have sent in your art of you know how you draw the characters and i'm really glad so uh, the names and artwork will be posted right here on screen i just want to thank everyone for submitting this art it's all really great really beautiful Art. So yeah, uh, I would like to see again uh, probably in the next how to draw I'll be putting up uh, more of everyone's art uh, based on this tutorial if you want to send me your sonic art based on like if you want to do this exact pose but in your style that would be really cool to see and I could put it in the next how to draw video and if you want to send me your art or anything like that you can either post it and tag me on Instagram at danspex or if you don't feel comfortable posting it you could just privately message me and I'll, I'll get it again thank you all so much for watching uh, I really hope this tutorial was useful and with all that said I'm danspex and I'll catch you later have a good one.